Hello, people. Found myself a gorgeous little place to train. I'm really stoked. Just down the road from my house here in Corumban. Nice quiet back street. Creek right here. Heaps of gum trees with native birds flying around. Perfection. So, why do birds and animals in general tend to watch or even come around me while I'm training? It's a really curious thing. Birds will sit in trees and watch. Magpies will quite often come right up and actually stand there and just look. They'll bring their babies up close. There seems to be no real fear in them. And I've observed this for years. Even when I first did Taiji, I would, I'd be training. I worked at SeaWorld and I'd be training beside the dolphin enclosure. And the dolphin would be watching me. And they would swim up, you know, three or four or five at a time and just sit on the edge of the pool and just be, they'd have their, you know, head on the side with their eye up, watching. It's because in Taiji and Qigong, it uses what is called internal movement, which is a little bit too mystical. I'm not terribly into the mysticism of things. I think it separates people's ability to connect with them in our modern culture. So to strip away the mysticism of what internal movement is, I believe it's just a term for whole body compound movement. The same kind of movement you see an elite sport uh, sports person doing when they throw a javelin, throw a discus, um, do long jump. It's a whole body compound movement, just done incredibly slowly so we can understand the minute, intricate details and body interconnectedness that goes in to an explosive movement. Because Taiji is based on a martial art and those of us like myself who still practice it as a martial art, as a as a martial art, want that full body explosivity. And so how this feeds through to our Qigong is to watch the people go, oh, I want Qigong for healing. Doing your movements slow like this still form your connective tissue or your triple heater organ, your body structures around doing a compound explosive sporting movement albeit not under the intensity or the load. So you're still getting the body connectivity of someone who is an elite athlete, or Carol, I just love them, um, but not under the load or intensity. And either A, you're not at that level yet, and Taiji and Slow Form will teach you how to get there by restructuring your body so you do have that interconnectedness, you do have the body structures and the connective tissue networks to perform uh, a more powerful compound explosive style sporting movement albeit incrementally to get you there not all of a sudden just you know massive amount of body explosion that could potentially hurt you but that it teaches and forms your body around working in that way giving you the same health benefits of having those connect of having that whole body connectivity and the ability to move your body in that way albeit, as I've said, not under the same intensity or power or load. However, you can incrementally get there. So, how this happens is very different to how we think about things in West. And I believe the reason that animals understand this is because of the whole body connectivity that comes through this. Now, I want you to introduce you to your jellyfish. So, let me tell you a story. Let's say a couple of hundred million years ago, uh, floating around in the primordial swamp of existence was a single cell organism. <laughs> floating through this swamp, using breath as a means of not only respiration, but also to create movement through the swamp, through the water, as it navigated its uh, terrain taking in the information that was available to it um, through its senses, through what it had, until eventually it evolved into us. Now I like to imagine this jellyfish is still with me today. In fact, I call it Lower Dantien. This is where 
my jellyfish lives. It is my jellyfish. But this jellyfish, as it began to navigate its terrain and evolve, grew tentacles. These tentacles are now my legs and my arms. And the jellyfish is still moving around, right? So in Western medicine, we talk about muscle chains and people basically say the muscle chains go from the tips of the fingers to the tips of the toes. Yeah, but not really. It's not, a, it's not the best way I feel to think about it, to get this whole body connectivity and this chi transformation and to power the Jing Chi Shen cycle of evolution. We want to come back to our jellyfish. So instead of thinking of the muscle chains as going from the tips of our fingers to the tips of our toes, let's think about this jellyfish as going from our jellyfish center, lower dantian, down and up and out. So these are my top tentacles and these are my bottom tentacles. And through moving my jellyfish, I can create a contraction. So if my jellyfish sucks, sucks those in or it pushes those out, right? And so by the jellyfish moving, it gets these tentacles to move. Now, in the concept of the human body, or in Chinese medicine anyway, the concept of the human body is that our internal organs, uh, where all our chi and blood is made, manufactured and stored, and the organs have are like batteries, if you will. Uh, when that battery power runs out, the organ uh, dis, uh, has uh, misfires, dysfunctions, disease forms, or you die. And so what we learn in Chinese, what we learn in Taiji or our Qigong is to use this jellyfish of our center to actually move its tentacles and in doing so we're squeezing and pumping the chi and blood of our internal organs out through the meridian system or the acupuncture channels out through our tentacles into the outside world or alternatively as that jellyfish went moved through the primordial swamp of existence it drew in information through its tentacles and through its senses to help it better navigate its environment it helped it evolve and so part of this jellyfish is keeping our tentacles empty and open and receptive to what's going on the jellyfish moves which causes my body to move now normally, when we move, a lot of the time, and even in uh, some compound sporting movements that we do, the body is still treated very discombobulated. This poor little jellyfish is going, both legs have to move like this, both arms have to move like that. It's got multiple things to think about, and as you're probably well aware, multitasking isn't a human being's strength. We can do it, we can get away with it, but when we want to really focus on a single task, that holistic approach and that focus of uh, attention is the most important thing. So we can bring all our body movement of all our separate limbs, of our different tentacles and all our bits and pieces back to one single movement by actually learning how to engage our jellyfish and move these tentacles through the movement of Dantian and not through creating a separate, separated, discombobulated approach to movement where everything is moving separate. So, you've probably moved in this way at different times uh, in your life. A lot of the time people may dance like this without even knowing it, but even then, moving outside this way of movement. So what we're learning in our Qigong, and one of the reasons why, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe this movement dates back to, okay, so there was a text written two and a half, three thousand years ago called uh, Neijing, uh, Neijing Suen, uh, Yellow Emperor's Classic Internal Medicine, uh, and they were talking about the ancients then, so let's say at least five, six thousand years old, they were talking about the ancients using Qigong to harmonize with the natural environment. Now, one of the beautiful things about when they get into Meitaiji, and one of the reasons I think animals don't have any fear because what I experience is a dissolving into the environment. People say that in Qigong you absorb the sun, you absorb the wind, you absorb the mountains. No. You absorb
absorb their energy. So pious, so ignorant to believe you can, but you be, you become nature. You realize there is no separation from these things. So when you're doing your form, you are the trees, you are the breeze, you are the ripples in the water. Your whole being just separates into being nature. The jellyfish is again wiggling its tentacles out into the environment to collect information. It's empty, it's open, it's receptive. It is not attaching belief and desire to anything. It's just being, and it's just receiving. It's sucking in information and like spitting out information, sucking in and then reaching out with its, with its awareness into the environment around it. No grasping, no discombobulation, no trying, no effort, just a dissolving into nature, to be nature. And that's what the animals see. The animals don't see this big mechanical robot who looks separate from the world that they know. The animals are like, fuck, this dude knows some shit, like he's cool as custard. They don't, they don't have that fear. They understand you are nature. They will understand your intention by, by, by seeing you without, you know, without, yeah, by seeing you, but seeing you in the larger context of a holistic environmental, they see you. Like you see the mountain, like you see them and you see the tree. You are not longer separate from them. They see you as a part of the nature of the environment they're in. Of course, if you make a fast move towards them, they'll be like, right, he's hunting me now. But while you're not engaged in the hunt, they're not concerned. And that's why a lion can walk up to a waterhole and the wildebeest is still standing there. Like, they, they may be a little bit alert, right, because it's a lion. But they're not, they will understand if the lion all of a sudden begins to look like it's hunting them. They can see its nature. So when we're doing our qigong, we're dissolving back into this jellyfish. We're becoming empty. And we're using the jellyfish to feel our wiggling its weight, rippling its weight through its tensegrity system of tentacles. Being empty and soft. And just allowing yourself to become immersed, meshed, integrated, infused with the, na with the nature that is around you. Why sometimes if I'm doing my form in a storm, ah, I become the storm. It's in me. Ah. Sometimes if I'm in a nice, quiet environment, I have total peace and relaxation. And sometimes if something bangs behind me, like if I'm training somewhere and there's people around and someone drops something really loud, I'm like, Fuck! Oh wow, like it really shocked me, right? Like I reacted but without trying to respond. There wasn't an aggression, it's just a reaction because I'm in the nature of the way things are. Not trying, just simply being a part of nature. Jellyfish moving, being the jellyfish, feeling its tentacles reaching out into the environment. <laughs> Practicing whole body compound movements because everything must move. If one part of the jellyfish moves, the rest of the body. Actually, this brings me to a point. There's a couple walking past, young couple. Young Australian dude. And he's looking. He's looking, he's watching. The fuck is this cunt doing, mate? <laughs> right? The fuck? 
fucking wanker. He's not in nature. He's wondering why I'm not a discombobulated, separated mess. It confuses him. What the fuck is this fucking thing? You can't fucking do it. He's separate from that. He can't see what's happening. To him, it's just very weird. But to the animals, they completely know. Humans, we have become so separate from that world that anything that another human does it is that connected. It's like, it's either awe-inspiring or it's so confusing you don't understand it. It was I. I'm not whinging about that dude. Look, I've had it for you know, 27 years practicing the park. You think you're Bruce Lee, mate? The fuck can! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, okay. And it's good because it allows me just to dissolve that little bit more, you know, just to think to myself, it's okay, like, you know, I know where I'm at and I know what I'm doing and just let it all dissolve a little bit further, right? So if you want to learn how to dissolve into nature, you want to learn how to become country, and have no separatedness, separateness, separatedness, <laughs> from the environment. Learn to let go from the all too human world of thought, and worry, and concern, and actually become nature and realize that all the stress that we build up is our attempt to grasp and control that which is just bountiful. And it's all around us. The sages have been talking about this for millennia. When will we listen? So Qigong gives us a key to go back and rediscover that aspect of ourselves that joins us to nature allows us to once again become nature within ourselves. Your nature, his nature, their nature, my nature, nature. <laughs> um, yes, so, jellyfish, tentacles, learning this whole body movement, all our Qigong methods should be this ripple of this jellyfish. This is what it means to move from the center and be in your center. The center is to be nature, not to be focused on a task. I mean, that is a centeredness. But when the sages said, if you keep your center when all around you is chaotic, it won't affect you. And when all around is chaotic, it's people running around. Man, oh my God, the world's going to end! Ah! Nature will never end. There, there is, as far as we can tell, no beginning and no real end in sight. Things might end for humans or for this planet or for certain things. Yeah. <laughs> but nature will keep going. So if we're going to dissolve into anything, if we're going to become our original being, if we're going to become our original shape, it's like the, you know, like Buddha talked about, stuff like that, and I'm not referring myself to Buddha or even saying I'm remotely there, but the idea that our original selves is nature, and there are pathways back to that, pathways set in stone by the ancients to teach us how to again become the animal that we are. Get that. But also learn how to be soft and gentle. I mean, we've all seen clips of animals that we think are these wild beasts that are, you know, always violent and aggressive, that do really kind and compassionate things to other animals when they're not hungry, when they're not hunting. Yeah? Because they're nature. They're in their nature. 
so Taiji helps us to find this original shape within ourselves. It lets our consciousness dissolve the tension patterns through our meridian system by rippling our energy through, teaching us strength in softness through how we shake our jellyfish as opposed to physically and muscularly trying to control our environment. Okay, I think that's enough for me for today. Guys, if you'd like to know about Qigong, if you would like to learn, and not from the, from the many people I see who are just indoctrinated lineages, but in a way of embodying this concept in how to find your jellyfish and the pathway through to change your qigong from just being arm movements and learn how to move from your jellyfish and how to apply the principles of Taoism and Chinese medicine into these movements so you too can harmonize with your nature or with nature. free to get in contact. I'm starting to run some online classes at a very basic level, nice follow along level so you can come along. And I rant a lot like this so if you've enjoyed this ranting, come and listen to me rant. I rant a lot. But there's usually method to my madness. I have teacher training programs because I really think this needs to get out there. <laughs> holds different messages in yoga or meditation. I think Qigong is really super important in our society right now. As coming back to our nature, coming back to nature, has never seemed more important than it does right now. To the point where I don't even feel necessarily like teaching. I mean, if I could find a cave and I could survive, I might just disappear for a while until all the confusion is gone. That wouldn't be very <laughs> stoic or kind. I'm going to learn to stop <laughs> being in the rat race. Stop your mind from wanting to get involved in all the human chaos. Drama. Been on Facebook lately? Fucking drama. Division. Hate. Seems like paths to the dark side to me. <laughs> and by all means, follow along. All right, I better stop this rant. I'm really taking uh, <laughs> some time. Really, that's what we've got, isn't it? Time. So, thank you very much for your time, if you've given it to me today, to watch this clip. I'd be really interested to know what you think in the comments. I do often feel quite crazy and exposed doing clips like this, but I'm just getting over it because when I watch some of the madness that is out there, that this seems maybe potentially extremely sane in comparison. Hmm. Alrighty guys, I'm going to do some more form practice. Drop out all the worries and concerns and just have faith in nature. And of course, my jellyfish. I love my jellyfish. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you can separate yourself from the drama in the world and come back to 
your truth. <laughs>